Specifically, one of the things that I believe is that we should respect students' time and lives outside of music. So one of the things that I do that I've encouraged my faculty to do is to get rid of late penalties on grades for work that's turned in late. I don't believe that turning something in late changes the quality of the work. So um, we've gotten rid of those uh, grade penalties. The next thing that I believe is that auditions into music school and into ensembles only serve to further disenfranchise minority populations and students that come from underserved communities. It is not a student's fault if they did not have access to resources when they were in high school, if they didn't have private lessons, if they don't know how to properly interpret an ornament. Um, these are not things that every student has access to and it's not their fault if they didn't decide until their senior year that they wanted to teach music. I think it's actually a bit arrogant for a music teacher or a music school to say, mm, you're, you're just not good enough to work with me. Uh, you know, that I, that's just absolutely ridiculous. That is something that a teacher who's not very good would say. I believe that if a student is driven and passionate and if they want to learn and they want to put in the work, then any student can be taught. We have to teach to where the student is and work with them and inspire them. That's what a great teacher does. Um, and then regarding inclusivity, I have slightly unorthodox approaches about that. Um, I want things to be so inclusive that I actually have a saxophone section in my orchestra. And if if we need to write out parts for a student to be able to participate, if we need to make the, the music a little bit easier for them as we are giving them supports to get them to where they need to be, that's what we do. Um, also as a member of the LGBTQ community, it is really important to me that my space is a safe space for students, for all students. So one of the things that uh, we've done here is we took down um, the gendered signs on the restrooms and made it so that each restroom is um, for all genders. Um, and then also the music in my ensembles is chosen directly by the students and now often arranged by the students because they've taken such ownership uh, of the ensembles. A unique and innovative teaching methodology that I have implemented in my classroom is the step-by-step -step approach that I created for teaching jazz improvisation, specifically how to navigate chord changes while improvising. I break down the process, the mental process um, of improvising into small, easily digestible steps that can be taught and scaffolded with the students. My methodology provides structure, rules, and goals, which are things that students are used to. For example, this time through, you must only play quarter notes and you must land on the third of each chord every time that the chord changes. Or uh, this time you have to precede each chord change with a note that's a half step above the chord tone that you're about to resolve to, these kinds of rules. And then as we go through, I slowly take away the rules and the constraints one by one. Um, this teaches the students to be more purposeful in what they play. Most students, the reality is, most students are completely terrified to improvise jazz. Um, so by giving them go goals and rules um, and allowing them to improvise in a large group setting with everybody improvising all at once, they all get to practice these things without being singled out until they're ready to play a solo. Um, and these, this process is meant to be done in conjunction with all of the other great methodologies that are out there, transcriptions, listening to jazz, practicing skills, and patterns um, and all of those other things. Anything I could do with music, I love doing it. So when I wasn't able to do any of that, that was a really hard time for me. And Dr. Royer really helped pull me out of that hole that I was in and she gave me a space where I felt comfortable and safe enough that I could come back to playing music. And for that, I'm forever grateful to her. Um, She's just a deeply kind, understanding, and empathetic individual who I think always brings joy to the room and space that she's in. So I know that wherever she goes, she's going to be a light to those students. She's going to be a light to everybody that she meets. So, yeah.